Hello and welcome to the video. My name's Ray Whitsby and I'm your host. In this video we're going to be looking at wood turning a Coca-Cola can night light. This is also part of the YouTube Cross Channel Challenge 2021. The link for other videos is in the description below. It would be great if you could go and check it out and support other content creators. The month of May was the Mimic Challenge and I wanted to see if I could reproduce a Coca-Cola can from wood and resin and I chose ash as the wood part of the project. The first part of the project was to get the lettering sorted out. It's highly cursive, the logo for Coca-Cola, and required a mixture of the scroll saw and the band saw and then a lot of sanding in order to get those letters looking just about right. Naturally, health and safety is a high priority, and whilst these videos may show my fingers very close to the blade, I am taking as many precautions as I can, being safe. So it's feeding it in slowly and being very aware of just how close the fingers are to a moving blade. I'd advocate not trying to do this project unless you've got a lot of experience in using the machinery. Or select a project that just has a less intricate design. I had to vary the wave pattern a couple of times just so that it would fit correctly and sit underneath the letters when placed on the central column before casting in resin. The sanding stage actually took a long time. I want to try and get as many tool marks out of each piece. So it's just progressing as slowly as possible and carefully with a mixture of sanding paper and even trying the Dremel sander as well. You can see I'm using some scrap wood for the central column and it has a series of relief cuts into it. And this is to help avoid any trapping of the air from the lettering. I'm alternating between the use of super glue and the hot glue gun in order to get the letters and the stripe attached firmly onto the central column. The critical thing is to get the spacing of the lettering absolutely correct because the Coca-Cola brand is iconic and it will instantly um, look terrible if it's just not incorrectly. Made a little faux pas where the stripes didn't actually touch the base I was going to use for this can. Anyway, that'll have to just involve a little extra work later on. The epoxy resin is from Dippon Liquid, and this is great deep pour resin to use for these types of projects. I've never had a problem with overheating or bubbles within the resin when I'm using the pressure pot. I'm using pigments from Resin 8 for the first time, and this was a great find as well. And they were able to provide an array of dyes for epoxy resin that are very stable and very rich in color, and being slightly opaque, which helps with the ability to produce a nightlight for this project. Now, I'm not being paid by dip on liquids or resonate. I wish they would, I wish they could be free samples, but just to say that the products um, from the use in what I'm doing in the creation of resin and wood, these are fantastic. On to the wood turning. And this involved a lot of back and forth switching from the top to the base in order to progress the project how I wanted it. And I did make a couple of mistakes in terms of not getting that base close to the stripe or vice versa. So I had to engineer um, alternative solutions. It wasn't the most time efficient approach, uh, but it worked eventually. The first step was to get a tenon on the base, then reverse it and get it into a chuck. Then looked at the column width for the coke can. So it's just to approach on one particular end and then come down to the central core until I had all the letters and the stripes revealed uniformly. Then work down the entire column until we've got, in a rough sense, 
the entire shape of the Coke can revealed. As ever, I'm using carbide tools for this kind of woodworking project. It's just great when working with the resin and the wood combination. It leaves a beautiful finish with very little or to no chipping. But I don't have the steadiest of hands when moving across the column on the lathe, so it does require quite a bit of sanding in order to get all the ridges out and get a nice flat finish. Once the outside was shaped, then we move on to the hollowing. And we needed a lid, and I was going to use an inset rim as well. So this required a little bit of fiddling about to try and get a piece of wood that would fit into the hollow perfectly, um, but also have a, a, a sufficient recess in which we could have a lowered rim for the lid. The rim was epoxy glued in and then left overnight. I needed to have a very strong interface in that section because I was going to put on another tenon in order to reverse it into the chuck and then deal with the base. So I had made this problem of not getting the stripes connected to the base. So I had to cut it to the right point and then put on a new piece of wood that would then form the base of the can. Before attaching the new base, I needed to hollow out the cylinder. This would just make things easier rather than coming in from the top end in order to get an internal cavity. I wanted to be as faithful as possible to the overall geometry and the aesthetics of the Coca-Cola can. So there was a lot of procrastination about how to proceed to the next stage. And on reflection, after completing the project, it was much easier to then select a more time efficient pathway but I just had to go with what I had and deal with the problems as they arose. So here we're just going to epoxy glue in the new base and again leave it overnight because I needed a strong interface to generate a tenon from which to then put it into the chuck, reverse everything again and then deal with the lid. This was an unbelievably fiddly part of the project, trying to deal with such thin amounts of wood. And I had taken some measurements before placing in the rim, um, but again, it was very, very concerning as to how much room I had to play with. So it's just to proceed as slowly as possible and make a final decision, a bit of a risk calculation. I managed to pull it off, I think. Being a mimic project, it didn't have to be perfect, but I wanted to get it as close as possible. And I also wanted a lid so I could put a night light inside. The ash wood was great to work with, but there were times where it seemed to not cut as well as it should. So I put some stabilizing solution on, allowed that to dry, and then went again, and that just gave a much better cut. As said before, there was a lot of sanding involved in this project. It's something that you cannot rush. And I used a uniform approach, which was to sand it down to 240 grit, put on the sanding sealer, then proceed with sanding up to about 2000 grit, put on the Yorkshire grit, and then a final polish. And that just seemed to have really brought the piece alive. Great finish. And that is mainly down to the resin eight pigments that I use within the resin. It's just got this beautiful intense color that I hope is faithful to the Coke can. Into the latter stages of the lathe work, and this was to put it into a remounting jaws and focus on the base. I'm trying to get that down to a suitable size and shape. The one thing I wasn't gonna do was avoid having the tail stock in. I needed to keep this secure and stop it, and prevent it in at all costs from flying off across the room.
with the coat can complete, the base is done, it was sanded and polished, and then we've got to deal with the lid. Not having wood turned anything so thin, I was really not happy about using the tools this close to the chuck. There probably was a much easier and safer way, maybe using a longer stem protruding out of the chuck. So please let me know in the comments below what should I have done in order to make this lid. I had put a lot of work into this project already and even just finishing the lid itself was going to take a lot more time. There was quite a bit of detail into the lid that I wanted to reproduce as faithfully as possible. So again, just had to resign myself to the fact it was going to be a slow and arduous process. For all scroll work, I used a spiral cutter, and this is great so you can keep the piece orientated in the same direction. The problem I had was down to me. I need a lot more practice with this machinery to get it as smooth and accurate as possible. And using small thin pieces in the scroll saw doesn't help either, especially on the upstroke and the machine's trying to take that piece out of your hands and throw it away. But getting it onto the bandsaw for the final cuts and shaping, then it's just sanding um, all surfaces and then trying to figure out the, the final indentations within the lid. Used a carving chisel to try and introduce a very fine line within that lid but I don't think it really shows in this image, unfortunately. And it was only after I had completed everything that I suddenly realized there was even more detail. The Coke can I had was used, okay, it was clean, um, but the tab had been pushed into the, the, the cavity, so I couldn't actually see what detail was left on the Coke can. So it was on to Google, find some images, and then get back into the workshop. The lid was sanded and polished, and then I needed to create just a small area in which the epoxy glue would hold the tab to the lid. So I had to just scrape away um, just a small section, get rid of that polish, then using epoxy glue, get that tab secured down. This was quite an intricate project, but thankfully without the extensive repetition that I've had on previous works. But I was very glad to get to the end of this one and to see the faithfulness in which the design came through. Or at least that's how I see it. Um, it would be great if you could let me know in the comments when you see the final images. What do you think? Um, does it look anywhere like a Coke can? The lid may be a bit fiddly to use, but again, it's not supposed to be a, a high contact item. It really was down to the mimic of the shape and aesthetics of the Coke can. So please let me know, even if you are a Pepsi drinker, what do you think of this project? This was with every aim to be a nightlight as well, to make it multifunctional. And I think it just really does pop out when you switch the lights on and it's late at night. Well, if you did like this project, please click on the thumbs up. It'd be great if you could subscribe and hit that bell notification. Please do share this video as well. Um, but above all, what I'd really love is if you could just comment below. Let me know what you think about it, whether it's good, whether it's bad. What would you have done differently? Thanks for watching and catch you next time.